so in in your view as well i guess would would number be a kind of objective truth as well in the sense that right now as we're talking there are at least two conscious agents here there's a, there's some kind of differentiation where they can be counted as these separate conscious agents does that relate in any way to the kind of to mathematics being some kind of objective feature of the world yes now, now we're in very very deep waters in terms of um realism and anti-realism about mathematics right and and philosophers of mathematics um themselves debate this um and it's it's a very very deep set of waters so <clears throat> the, the issues are not trivial for for my part the way i'm thinking about it right now is that I don't have any evolutionary grounds to dismiss math and logic. I, I do have evolutionary grounds to dismiss space and time as, and, and their structures being fundamental, but I don't have evolutionary grounds to dismiss the notion of structure itself. I, I can dismiss the notion that the structures I perceive tell me the truth about objective reality. That, that we can dismiss on evolutionary grounds. It seems to me <clears throat> The way I'm thinking about it right now, and I may revise, so this is where I'm, I'm my, myself quite open. Right now I'm thinking about math and logic um, <clears throat> as fundamental features of objective reality. So the question of do we invent mathematical theorems or do we discover them? Um, I'm on the discovery side, not the invention side. But I'm not wedded to that right now. It's, I would say that that is just the best idea that I have so far. What, what I can say is that if consciousness is fundamental, as I'm proposing, and again, of course, I'm probably wrong, but, but what we do in science is we write down our hypotheses, we put our assumptions on the table, we make them precise, and then we see where it goes. So that's the game I'm playing. I'm, my hypothesis is that conscious Consciousness in a formal structure that I've got called conscious agents are, are fundamental. We can count them to answer your question, yes, and that it's a legitimate way to, to count them. We can talk about their interactions with mathematical precision. And one interesting thing that comes out of it is the idea that if consciousness is all there is, and mathematics isn't an illusion, then mathematics is only about the possible structures and dynamics of consciousness. That's what, con that's what math mathematics is all about. It's all about consciousness. And the reason that's interesting to me is there's a deep question that I, of course, have to face. And that is if the universe is fundamentally this network of conscious agents, and that's what, it's, what it is, then what's it about? What are they up to? What, why? Why is there a dynamics of consciousness? What's it about? Right? If, you're, if you're a physicalist and you say that you know, what happened is the Big Bang, and uh, consciousness is a latecomer, the answer to that question may be that it's not about anything, right? It's certainly not about us. Um, we didn't, consciousness and life didn't exist for hundreds of millions, billions of years. And um, our best models suggest that, that life and consciousness will be completely extinguished for trillions of years before the universe is gone. So from, from that point of view, it's not about life, it's not about consciousness. We're a mere flicker, uh, you know, on, on the face of nature, you know, a, a, real, a, a mere distortion on the face of nature that, that lasts for just a, a fraction of a second compared to the whole lifespan of the universe. So it's not about us, and it's not clear it's about anything. But, but I, I don't have that kind of answer when I say it's, it's consciousness, right? Consciousness is fundamental. Okay, well, okay, well, what is consciousness up to? Why is it doing something as opposed to nothing? And, and the, the fundamental answer is I don't know. Uh, but but I have run across only one idea that seems deep enough to at least be worth considering. And it, the idea comes from a mathematical result called Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And I won't go into the theorem, but what it, what it entails is that there's no end to mathematical structure. No matter how much you explore mathematical structure, you will have only just begun. It, it, it's, it's truly a stunning, it's, it's one of the deepest, perhaps the deepest result in all of human thought is Gödel's incompleteness theorem. The idea that 
there is no end to mathematical structure. It's endless. And the exploration of mathematical structure is, is in principle endless. So if mathematical structure is endless in its possibilities and its exploration, and it's only about consciousness, then what that means is that there are endless mathematical structures of consciousness to explore. There's an endless variety of consciousnesses and conscious interactions to explore, endless. And in principle, no consciousness could ever get to the end of it and know all of it. That's, it's a principal thing. No God, even with a capital G, could ever know it. That, that's the interesting thing. There is no God of any kind that could ever know all there is to know. It's always going to be an endless exploration. And so one theory is, you know, I call it Girdle's candy store theory of consciousness. So Girdle's, there's this endless candy store of varieties of conscious experiences to explore. And that's what consciousness is up to. We're kids in candy stores. We're part of the exploration. And this the endless exploration of the ver endless varieties of conscious experiences and interactions that Girdle's theorem says are out there and could never be exhausted, even by a proposed infinite omniscient content. There is no omniscience. What, what, what I take from Girdle is there is no such thing as omniscience. There's always growth and exploration, the endless candy store, but omniscience is not possible. And that's, so, so I don't know if that's right, but it's at least deep enough to be taken as a candidate. And hopefully we'll find other candidates and we can start to have them compete against each other. But I like Girdle's candy store. It's sort of fun. Yeah, it's definitely a nice vision of the world, endless kind of conscious interactions uh, forever.